In this video, I will show you how you can use SnapGene to create mutagenic primers and simulate a mutagenesis reaction. To demonstrate this, I have a file open containing a PGL4 plasmid with the interleukin-6 gene promoter region. The promoter region can be seen here by this collection of features. Let me now switch to sequence view to get a better look at these features. The red feature corresponds to the interleukin-6 gene promoter and the rose-coloured feature is the 5' prime untranslated region. The orange feature is part of the coding sequence, or CDS. Notice I also have a pink-coloured feature within the promoter feature, and this is called RS-1800-795, and it is a clinically important single nucleotide polymorphism for the interleukin-6 gene. At this point, there is typically either a G or a C allele, in my plasmid, I have the G allele. What I want to do now is to create a different version of this plasmid that contains the C allele. To do this, I will create mutagenic primers for a mutagenesis experiment. The primer design guidelines are usually stated in the kit used for the mutagenesis reaction. For this example, I will be using the Quick Change Site Directed Mutagenesis Kit by Agilent. This kit recommends designing primers between 25 and 45 base pairs long. So I will select 15 bases either side of my desired mutation. Note, I will ensure the mutation is placed directly in the middle of the primer. So this means I have a selection of 31 base pairs in total. Next, I will create a new primer by going to Primers, Add Primer. And for this example, I will select to make a primer using the top strand first. I will call this primer RS1800795 C.4. I now need to change the G allele in the middle of the primer to a C allele. So I will select this and press C. Notice how the new base is identified by a loop. As well as changing bases in primers, you can also insert codons to primers. I will quickly explain how this is done. Switch to the Insertions tab and select a desired codon from the drop-down menu. Then either click a position if you want to insert the codon, or select a region if you want to swap the codon, and click Insert. The codon sequence will then stand above the original primer sequence, just like in the polymorphism example. I will remove this and get back to my example. I need to add a complementary primer to the one I just created. So, I will firstly uncheck the option to close the window after adding the primer and click Add Primer to Template to save this forward primer. To make the complementary primer, I will simply press the Reverse Complement button. I will also edit the name of the primer to RS1800795C.Rev and finally I will select Add Primer to Template and close the window. To simulate the mutagenesis reaction, I will select one of the mutagenic primers and then go to Actions, Mutagenesis. All I need to do in the new window is to edit the name of the mutagenized plasmid. I will call this one PGL4 IL6 Promoter C Allele. Then I will click Mutagenize to create the new file. With the new file open, I can click on the Show Colors button to see the base that was changed from the original plasmid. I can also switch to the history view to see how this plasmid was created. And that wraps up this video tutorial. In this tutorial, you have learned how to design mutagenic primers and simulate a mutagenesis reaction in SnapGene. For more information about simulating other techniques in SnapGene, check out the tutorials on the SnapGene website. If you found this video useful, please leave a like, it really does help support the channel. If you've got a question, pop it down in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more weekly tutorials.